Please welcome the director of the White House Domestic Policy Council, Neera Tandon. Good morning, everyone. It's really a great honor to be with you here. And as D director of the President's Domestic Pol Policy Council, I have the great privilege of overseeing the White House's policy work on Native Affairs. This is critical work for the President, and therefore it is critical work for us. And we are lucky to have our Senior Policy Advisor for Native Affairs, Liz Reese, lead our work. Liz, would you stand up? <laughs> As I said, it's really an honor to be here with you at the Third Tribal Nations Summit of the Biden-Harris Administration. The summit demonstrates our commitment to our relationship with tribes, with the President's participation, the Vice President's participation, and really a tremendous uh, participation of the Cabinet and sub-Cabinet. We are here to truly demonstrate our commitment to ensuring uh, the success of tribal nations and really demonstrate the nation-to-nation -nation relationship. I just want to say, uh, take a moment to say how grateful we are uh, for Secretary Holland's le leadership in not just leading the summit, but her work day to day, uh, month to month, year to year, to ensure the, the success of our relationship and really drive not just the Department of Interior, but agencies across government uh, with White House partnership to essentially make sure we're doing everything we can uh, to ensure the success of tribal nations. As my co-chair of the White House Council on Native American Affairs, I'm, a proud, to, I'm proud to work alongside her on these issues. And just to say, she's just been an extraordinary leader uh, and one the president deeply relies on on these issues. And that is why, uh, and, and, and really her focus has been the nation to nation relationship as it has been the president's. And that's what I want to really talk to you about today because when we think through the nation to nation relationship, it really boils down to one word, respect. Respect for tribal leaders, respect for tribal governments, and respect for tribal nations. And that idea is, is founded on a simple principle, which is that tribal nations are sovereign nations. Uh, you as leaders know what's best for your communities. You know what the needs of young people, families, elders, you know much better than the federal government. And that's is why it's time for our policy, policies to reflect that. And that is exactly the principle behind the president's executive order that he signed yesterday. The focus there is to usher in a new relationship between tribes and the federal government. And it recognizes that in our past, we've had a relationship that was at best patronizing and disrespectful and at worst really embraced disastrous policies that very much harm tribal nations focused on assimilation and really termination of tribal of tribes themselves and this is why we've tried to have a sharp break as you know 50 years ago our policies began to change the federal government began to embrace the concept of self-determination and respect for tribes and this eo builds on that progress it centers the core wisdom that tribal autonomy is central because it's about tribal nations' fundamental right to govern, but also to have the resources for tribal governments to do the work they need to do. And that's why, this, uh, that's why these programs, uh, the focus of the EAO is to ensure these programs across the federal government and the new investments we make in infrastructure and in the Inflation Reduction Act, that we are really driving agencies to give you as much autonomy as possible as much flexible funding as possible, as little red tape, as little, uh, as little strings attached as possible. As the President said yesterday, we are committed to working with you to usher in this new era because recognizing the importance of tribal autonomy is not only good policy, it represents the way in which we address our trust and treaty obligations. Now, a prime example of, the of a program that better respects tribal sovereignty is the Indian Health Service. 
Having worked on healthcare policy now for much of my career, I know how crucial the Indian Health Service is to tribal communities and how, how important it is in our healthcare system. IHS works to respect autonomy of tribes and how they run their services. And it is really a model program to ensure that we have self-governing compacts, affording tribes the flexibility to tailor healthcare services to the needs of communities. That is part of why I'm so ex exceptionally proud of our work to secure historic advanced appropriations for the Indian Health Service, which is really just a way of saying that the Indian Health Service should be able to plan, it should be able to uh, fund for years to come. Uh, right now, or in, in previous years, it has been funded on a year-to-year -year model. It is the only part of our federal health care investments that are funded on a year-to-year -year model, and that is why it's really critical that we move uh, move towards giving IHS the ability to make plans. Um, IHS is not a discretionary program. It is not something that should just be year to year. It is an essential program. Um, we like to say that discretion, discretionary programs mean you can really choose. We can't really choose with IHS. We can't really choose year to year to fund. We have to fund forever. For, and IHS is providing essential services life-saving care to Native people across the United States. And, and that is why we are proud of moving to this concept of being able to plan for the future, because this is really about keeping our promises, our promises to provide vital services. That is why in 2022, President Biden secured his, an historic $5.1 billion in advanced appropriations, the ability to plan in future years, for the Indian Health Service. And that is critical funding um, that we need to ensure continues in the years to come. As a result, the doors of IHS facilities remain open even in the event of a government shutdown. That is really critical because uh, we know that we face con congressional threats year to year, month to month often. This historic funding also gives IHS long over, overdue funding stability and predictability. Indian hospitals can, play, can plan ahead, hire doctors, buy supplies, and instead of surviving essentially from paycheck to paycheck from the federal government as institutions, there's real job security for people at IHS, IHS doctors, nurses, and staff. We're not done though. This year, President's, the President's FY24 budget provides an additional $3 billion for the Indian Health Service for a total of $8 billion, really historic funding. Through the Indian Self-Determination Act, Congress recognized the importance of increased tribal decision-making in the nation-to-nation -nation relationship between the United States and tribes. And through this law, IHS works with over 350 federally recognized tribes that now run their own health care. And that really brings us back to the EO, which is from IHS, we have a model in which over 50% of funds in the IHS bu budget goes directly to tribes to run their own health care programs, their own health care clinics, based on what they know their communities need. Tribes overwhelmingly have agreed that having the ability to design health care systems and clinics that work and servicing institutions that work for you provide a comprehensive approach to health and wellness is one of the greatest benefits of tribal self-government programs. And it is a model for our EO. It is a way that we are demonstrating. We really are we're pushing agencies to look at this model of funding, one in which there's really co-stewardship, co-managing, co-leadership of programs so that uh, tribal nations receive the funding that they deserve, but also have the governing uh, the power to govern that our nation-to-nation -nation relationship demands. IHS is an incredible example of what's possible when we partner with tribes and take owner and allow tribes to take ownership of programs. It's a model that we will, as I said, be driving agency to agency. I know there's more work to do to build on that spirit of collaboration and partnership, and I look forward to partnering with you as well. Just to step back, I think from the perspective of the Domestic Policy Council, we are really proud of the work over the last several years to 
uh, take on specific issues uh, of concern, but also really infuse our focus on the nation-to-nation -nation relationship across the government, whether it's through how we look at public lands, it, whether it's how we're investing new uh, dollars from the infrastructure law, the CHIPS Act, uh, the IRA Act, and uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, but it's also fundamentally how we look across government to ensure that we are providing uh, the autonomy that is the basis of respect for the nation-to-nation -nation relationship. And on behalf of the Biden-Harris administration, I really do want to expend, extend my gratitude, uh, my, res my respect, and my thanks for your leadership as we continue our conversations about the best way to move forward in the 21st century with the nation-to-nation -nation relationship between the United States and our tribal leaders. Thank you so much. Thank you.